Joseph here. Um, we're on about part 18 of Rapid Turn and um, I'm just doing another batch of parts, um, setting up the tooling. This has got more tool changes and I'm really enjoying um, automatic turning, CNC turning with different gang tooling positions and I'm pretty enthusiastic about it and so I encourage you guys to get into it if you've got this kind of work or this kind of hobby where you need to turn up a lot of little parts all the same it's a really good way to go so anyway I'll stop waffling on and um, get underway on this video cheers I'm just thinking about setting my tool offsets with this little half um, halved piece of aluminium diameter held in a three jaw chuck or in a collet that I mentioned in previous videos I think it's got a lot going for it I'm just thinking um, I can actually use it um, for setting uh, boring bar uh, gang tool holder centers as well so it's, I'm just doing a test here to see how accurate it is um, so let me just show you that if I come in there uh, on that flat with a dial indicator I'm getting about what's that about 19 and a half there now if I rotate this round 90 oh well, let's just let me show you something else I noticed that I was hoping would be the case at 19 and a half there now it doesn't actually matter that much that it's perfectly vertical because it takes quite a few degrees as long as you are on center in that direction before it starts to become an issue so as long as you're roughly aligned it's it's um, holding position now if I turn that 180 degrees and let's put a little slip gauge on there to just something with a flat surface you could use a little bit of ground gauge plate or something if I bring the dial indicator in close to the end now slide that over with it roughly vertical See, I'm getting, yeah, very close. I'm getting almost exactly the same amount. But whatever difference you get there is actually, because it's a generated system, you know, you're turning it and measuring it and turning it and measuring it. You're actually generating um, a measurement that is far more accurate than using a gauge. Um, and, and the amount of discrepancy is actually double the amount it's off center because you're measuring it in both directions so if you're getting a difference of a thou or two thou it's half that amount um, so there's some really good advantages in this because I know there's other ways you can put a dial indicator in here you know um, uh, you can put a dial indicator in there and if you've got one with a, a right angled uh, dial to the uh, stem then it doesn't go out of view, but it's still pretty fiddly and difficult. And when you're swinging it round, it's inclined to hit on things unless you get it right, and it takes a bit of time. This is a lot quicker. Now, if you're using it to set your Y for your different gang tooling positions, um, you know, and you go back until you just feel it start to bite there, you enter the thickness of the paper, which is uh, usually about minus. Uh, which is 4 thou or 0.1 usually enter it as a minus value in the Y DRO because you're in front of the center line by that amount um, and uh, you've got it set now you can zoom over to the next position now this is where a big advantage of using the system comes in here we've got the vertical gang tooling bore type TTS holder and I've put a three-quarter inch dowel in there or you could use a piece of ground stock you know silver steel or something can you see that okay there's a the little half half uh, halved piece of aluminium if I turn that round the other way vertical position and then slide let's get this right let's go cross with the Y <laughs> Now just slide that because it's a neat fit in there up touching the end of the piece of aluminium and then go back in until it just slips past there um, I'm just doing it to show you in principle um, so it's just squeaking past there 
then take a note of that dimension on the y-axis and add to it half that three-quarter inch diameter, 3.8 in metric or 9.5, uh, 3.8 in imperial or 9.52 in metric. Add that to it on your calculator and you've got the dimension to the center in a matter of a minute. A big quick and easy way of doing it. So I'm using um, this piece of halved aluminium to set the Y positions because remember Path Pilot for Rapid Turn and Slant Pro don't have Y position tool touch off facilities so I'm only using it to get those dimensions here relative to this little Y DRO here I've got zero for my master tool, 73.2 for the next one, and uh, another another amount for the back one, and another amount for the TTS board. So I'm just using that method to find those at the moment. I'm also going to use it to find the X's, but I won't explain that because I really don't want to add to the confusion on uh, setting tool offsets. Um, I know there's a lot of confusion confusion on this and there's several different ways of looking at it. Daniel Rogie does some excellent videos on the subject on the Toolmark YouTube channel. I suggest you watch those if you're unclear about it. Um, and uh, I, So I won't go into that here but I'm, we're going to also use these little aluminium, half piece of aluminium to set the X which in this case is the vertical position. Oh, that's right, and Mike Tallis, also from Tormark on the YouTube channel, um, does another very good video explaining setting the uh, tool offsets for Rapid Turn and Slant Pro um, that's explained in a slightly different way. So if you watch both of those, um, it'll begin to make sense. Um, it, is, it is quite complicated and um, abstract. Uh, to get your head around that. Well I'm just learning this as I'm doing it so I'm far from an expert on this but I would say that it's a good idea uh, before you run your uh, program to uh, just check that you've got good clearance all around so I've moved the tools back a little bit in the Y and if I set them here uh, on center I can then look at the various tools and check that for example that long drill won't contact the chuck jaws when they're rotating and you can just kind of move over to, to the various tool positions and the, the uh, different Z travel positions that they go to and just check your clearance um, before you get close to actually running the program. I can imagine some of you watching this will think oh this all sounds a bit scary and complicated I know I would feel like that if I'd watched this never having done it before but actually it isn't really it's quite logical um, once you've done it a couple of times I'm finding it really enjoyable actually um, so I've only got had a background in manual lathe turning um, so you know um, if I can work it out I'm sure you can work it out um, so it's really just uh, breaking it down into stages and the first stage is to set your work and your blank and all the various tools that you're anticipating using just fit them all in then the next stage is to set all the tool offsets on Pathpilot and you just do that all carefully and slowly um, and then the next stage is to conversationally program the part in a series of stages I'll just quickly talk about that go through each of the conversational stages for example starting by facing the stock produce that code and, and just try that you know so what you do is you post it to a file that's uh, here, post it to the file, just the facing as a separate item. And then when you're happy with that, go to conversational again, and then you might want to do, see the OD turn. So you just test that file, post that file, OD turn. I'm going to watch I don't mess up what I've done here while I'm talking. <laughs> file. Um, and test that. Now if you're happy with that then you go back to your conversational 
and say, okay, those, those two programs are right now. I've made a couple of adjustments and rerun them, and I'm happy with them. So then you just get the second file, and instead of posting it as a separate file, you append it to the first file. Then you go back to your conversational, and you do the next stage. It might be drilling or whatever. Um, and then you run that, just that file, and test it. And if you're happy with that, then you append that to the main file. And so in the end, you have all of these sort of little test part, uh, files of various tool paths and one file which is them all stuck together and if you want to change the, the order of them just go to this really neat little tool and you can shift you can see all your files there all appended together and you can just shift them up and down until you're happy with the order of them and each time you're running it with one more one more file so you might end up with six files um, or eight files and then that you've tested them all one at a time and you're happy with them all uh, you, you, you can then run it all the time with your maximum velocity slider down when you start getting near the chuck or when you start rapid traversing between tools and it's not that difficult and it's a heaps of fun guys okay so we've set our stock out with our little stock setting tool projected it out exact amount it for the production. Now I'll just run this part now but I'll just quickly show you the tool. So tool 1 is this turning tool, then we've got tool 5 which is a tapered ball nose cutter which is doing two things, it's center drilling the stock in the end but also forming a tapered portion of the bore. So it's, and then we're going to tool, uh, what was that tool 4? This is tool 5, we're drilling in a certain depth and then we're going to be going to tool 2 which is my original parting tool from the previous job so let's just run that now okay let's run it let's hope I didn't accidentally change the file and you're gonna watch a tool bit go flying into the chuck it sparks in all directions <laughs> facing it on the end Turning the OD. Put a little undercut in there, radiusing that corner, turning that diameter. Now we're going to go back over to not there, don't go there. This centers it and also puts in a tapered core. Now we're going to drill the hole. And then finally we'll shift over to the parking position. On a lighter note, did I mention I cut this notch out of my uh, guard? Because it's just a matter of time before I forgot about it and went crashing into it with the back of rapid turn. I've got soft limits, but they're no use if the guard's in the way. <laughs> just because well that about wraps it up guys um, making nice easy little acetyl parts still I'm only working to a tolerance of a thou or two um, a very different world from machining tool steel parts uh, with threads and tapers to high precision and high tolerances I'm really looking forward to getting some of that work and that will really test rapid turn and I don't know whether it's capable of that type of work or not yet. Um, so enthusiastic, enthusiastic as I am for doing this type of work, I'm very aware that I've yet to test rapid turn for some, in some real world situations. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Catch you again.